Hey guys, welcome to Your Place Inside and Out. This week we have tips, tricks, inspiration, and even some advice from our local professionals on how to get your place dialed in from inside to outside just in time for this gorgeous weather. Today we have a great show. With all the beautiful flowers in bloom, we're going to check out one of the best flower shows in the nation and get some awesome gardening inspiration to brighten up your place. But first, let's learn the things that you should consider when remodeling your kitchen, along with how you can add value and work within your existing budget. Your home is probably the largest and most important purchase you'll make in a lifetime. So obviously, keeping your home's value is important. Research shows the most effective way to gain value inside your home is to remodel or update your kitchen. Matter of fact, You'll sell your home faster and recoup almost 90% of your investment with a kitchen remodel. Enter Mark Morgan. With over 30 years of family experience building homes, we sat down to ask if a kitchen remodel really was the best way to spend money and invest in your home. It should definitely be at the top of your list. I mean, remodeling the kitchen is one place that it's going to help the time that it takes to sell your house and selling the house more quickly, as well as you're going to get a lot of that money that you put into it back and the selling price of your home and everything. There's not many other places in your house that you can get as much of the money back that you invest into the kitchen remodel. And when you're doing it, even if it's something that you're gonna sell down the road, it's something that you can enjoy during the time that you have left in the home. We've all heard how expensive kitchen remodels can be. So what makes up the cost of a remodel? And how can we keep that cost down? Moving the appliances around in the kitchen is going to definitely add cost because you're moving around your electrical and your plumbing. So anytime you move a kitchen sink, you move where the range or the refrigerator are located at, you're adding some fairly significant cost that you're really just not going to see right off the bat. Outside of that, with the tighter budget or a, sm a smaller budget, you could start off with you know, just painting the cabinets that you have or changing the hardware, possibly changing the doors on the cabinets, but keeping the actual cabinets themselves in place and just doing new doors and resurfacing. Uh, as you start to spend more, you can get into replacing cabinets or keeping the cabinets you have, but redoing the countertops and the backsplash. And then obviously if you get into a full gutting of it and starting over from scratch, new cabinets, new countertops, and then the appliances go start out at a very basic appliance and can skyrocket when you start getting into some of the higher end stuff. Knowing the cabinets is a good and affordable place to start, let's get some cabinet tips from the expert. In cabinets I think about functionality and what you need, whether you need drawer spaces or whether you need uh, pull outs and all the upgrades and things that can add to them. We see lots of white cabinets right now and white kitchens and just very clean and crisp lines trending I feel like a little bit more away from the glazed cabinets but still people getting using some of those uh, artistic expressions on their islands. You can always add on the under cabinet lighting underneath the cabinets and another thing that you can add if you pick a cabinet in a certain area where it works well is adding a glass front, a decorative glass in that glass front with shells and in those cabinets you can add puck lighting and let you display some of your uh, more decorative pieces. Otherwise, it might be like an open shelf on the in, on an end, end of cabinet that would have, you know, kind of a spot for smaller knickknacks to be placed. So, aside from the colors and designs, what are some cool functional trends right now with kitchens? Not only to add value, but also to make your kitchen more enjoyable to work in. You see lots of folks interested in the pot filler, especially when their range is not near their kitchen sink and making the actual cooking very functional there. The other thing is trying to get rid of the appliances aren't, that aren't as attractive in the kitchen. And so your range can be something that's very wowing, but I have not yet found an attractive microwave. So a lot of times we try to get a hood insert and get a hood above the range and then find a place to nestle that, that microwave away in a base cabinet and go with an under, under uh, counter microwave that uh, gets it out of the line of sight. We spend a lot of time in the kitchen sink, so what can we do to make this time more enjoyable and add some design to our kitchen as well? I would look, think about both on the kitchen sink, the look, but then also the functionality of it. We have very few people today that still go with the 50-50, the even split on the kitchen sink. Most of them go with either a 60-40 or a 70-30 undermount kitchen sink. However, we've seen a lot 
recently go to just a single bowl, large sink, just throw everything in it. And, and then the other thing is obviously the farmhouse sink. And those you can get into stainless, copper, enameled, uh, enameled cast iron, and add another little artistic or decorative touch. We've talked cabinets, countertops, appliances, and even the kitchen sink. So what about flooring? If you've got a natural floor, you can sand it and restain it with a different color and just do a refinishing of it. Otherwise, you can add hardwoods and do wood flooring, which is going to be our most common uh, flooring option for uh, kitchens. But you could also get into tile, and that gives you a lot of other color options and varieties and looks that you can't get with the wood, obviously. Finally, let's talk about the backsplash and how to accent the kitchen with this inexpensive and easy to achieve upgrade. A lot of times, uh, adding flair and personality to the kitchen can best be done in the backsplash. And in the backsplash, one of the best ways of doing that is with an accent over top of a range where you can take not only the, whether it be subway tile or tumbled stone or whatever you're using for your backsplash, but you can bring in a totally different tile for that accent, whether it be glass or some type of a mosaic or something that will let you get uh, some of those decorative touches and colors that you want in there. And you could even get into metal accents or medallions that would be either a stainless or a rub bronze or something like that that would uh, give you some other accent options in the backsplash. And the other spot that you can accent stuff is, you know, with your cabinet hardware even. Now that we have all the information about how and what to upgrade, how long will this entire process realistically take? At first thought, you might think a kitchen remodel could be done in a couple of days, but it's never going to happen that quickly and everything. It's always going to take at least a week's time, if not a couple of weeks, to get a full kitchen remodel done. Some of that's going to depend on how extensive your remodel is, but um, definitely plan for that time. And plan during that time, you're not going to have use of all your cooking appliances. You're not going to have use of your kitchen sink. And so, you know, be prepared to eat out if you don't usually and anything, and uh, enjoy that time as much as you can. Well, it's obvious that a kitchen remodel can help resale value and the enjoyment of your home. And they're more realistic than you might have thought. So when it's time for you to update your kitchen, find a local pro here in town and enjoy your place better, inside and out. Tulips, roses, and sunflowers, I love them all. And they can bring so much joy to your place inside and out. So come with us as we visit an amazing flower show where you might just get some unique inspiration. I know I did. Artistic. Vibrant. Glorious. We all know flowers can jazz up your home and garden. If you're ready for some new ideas, we are on the right path at the oldest and largest flower show of its kind in the country, the Philadelphia Flower Show. The theme here has a Hollywood vibe, and it's a good start to putting that pizzazz in your garden, no matter where you live. Taking inspiration from Disney Pixar films like Cars, this landscaper puts pedal in the metal, using junk cars and old pickup trucks to create a feel similar to the popular movie, illustrating that one man's lost hubcap can become another gardener's inspiration. You can use them as sculptural elements, um, kind of get creative with them, maybe make some sort of whimsical element into like, a, maybe use, make, make them into a water fountain or repurpose something for some sort of decorative object. Um, you could repurpose any object if you were interested in cars or if you were interested in, say, like old farm equipment or any sort of, um, like any object you can reuse. You can make it in a sculpture for your garden. You think of it in, as an artistic element that you're adding, maybe a focal point somewhere. The whimsy of Peter Pan can fly in your backyard with exotic plants and orchids. Add some hand-painted signs, a small fountain, maybe even Peter Pan's felt hat. Sculpted trees and shrubs surround a Mulan-themed garden. Chinese blossoms and splashes of color along with architectural rocks and calm waters give you a glimpse into a tranquil space for your backyard. 
If this type of gardening leaves you feeling like a fish out of water, perhaps you can take the bait from this underwater adventure in the Finding Nemo exhibit. It's designed to mimic life on a coral reef, 14 feet below the waterline. Fishtail palms almost look like schooling fish, while upside down air plants float like jellyfish. This garden represents design theory and different elements. You would just have to switch out the type of plants that are used, but essentially somebody could have a Nemo garden in their backyard if they really wanted to work for it. Picture Aladdin's magic carpet made of roses, or pinpoint the bullseye. Even gargoyles have their place, and don't forget to add the cobwebs. Of course, space for Cinderella's grand ball may be limited to where you live, and landscape designers here know they've created the ideal, and not necessarily reality. But imagine plucking an idea or two to build a dream on. A simple bench, a straw hat, and a wrought iron gate. Croquet anyone? 